was that time of the service in which we get into God's Word, and we welcome you to that. Today we're going to be looking at a familiar psalm as we continue the series on joy. Psalm 100, if you'll turn in your Bibles with me, please. Last Sunday morning we began the series of Advent by sharing the truth that joy originates in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You can be happy because happiness is an emotion. Uh, you can have everything going your way and you can feel happy, but some days things don't go your way and you feel sad. And so emotions come and go, but joy stays steady. Because joy is connected to Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can bank on that. You can stand on that solid rock. You can have joy even in the midst of sorrow. Do you know that even when you're at your most unhappy moment, your heart can be filled with joy? And it's all because... It originates in Jesus. You'll remember we looked at John 15. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. As long as we remain in him, that connection is where our joy is found. Today we're looking at Psalm 100, and I've entitled the message, Shout for Joy. Listen as I read, please. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray together. Father God, as we look at this ancient psalm, help us to understand the truth that you are speaking into our lives. Help us to understand the importance of joy and where that joy comes from. As we think of this Christmas season, people all around us are talking about joy. It is displayed in their Christmas decorations. It's heard in their Christmas music. The word is used in a variety of contexts, and yet it is so misunderstood. And so, Lord, by your Spirit, give us a deeper and richer and fuller understanding of biblical joy, so that we can navigate life with all its ups and downs, with all its triumphs and all of its struggles. We pray that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. We pray that in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the psalmist is talking about how we should worship and why we should worship that way. He begins the psalm by saying, Shout for joy to the Lord. Worship involves our expression of joy to the Lord for all that He is. But I have a definition of worship here that is the absolute best I have ever read. It's by a man by the name of Richard Foster, who actually has a Quaker background, but wrote some really important books, including Celebration of Discipline. Worship is a human response to a divine initiative. Now just think about that for a moment. 
that when we come together to worship, we are responding to the initiative of God. And there's no better time of the year to think about that than Advent. Because the sending of His only Son to earth, to be born in a manger, to be raised sinless, and to die on a cross, and to raise from the dead, all of that is by the initiative of God. Now we know that, don't we? We don't deserve it. We didn't do anything to kind of get that ball rolling. God, out of His grace, gave us His only Son. And so what do we do? We worship Him. You know, this has application in every aspect of worship. One of the most challenging aspects for those of us who live in this concrete, physical world is the aspect of money. Well, we have a little basket up here, and on Sunday we have the opportunity to put tithes and offerings in the basket. And that's just one tangible way that we give to God. But some people get a little bit nervous when we talk about money, or some people feel uncomfortable. And quite honestly, even apart from worship, money can be a challenging subject, generally speaking. Uh, how many marriages struggle with financial issues? Why has Dave Ramsey taken off like, you know, wildfire, and all his books, and all of that? It's because money is an issue. But let me boil it down to its simplest form. If God sent His only Son, then my human response is to say, God, I love you. And you can say that in music. You can say that by your presence in a worship service. You can say that by being out and about in a quiet spot and just spending time in the Word of God and in a personal devotional life saying thank you, God. But you can also say it in a very tangible way. In fact, you might have heard it said that money speaks, you know. Uh, it, it's amazing that, uh, you know, we can do a lot of talking, but Let's put our money where our, you, you see, that's a way to express. And so when I worship God, do you know that there are many churches today that prior to the pandemic have removed the offering from the church service? They don't want to talk about it anymore. They don't want to offend anybody anymore. And so they put it somewhere in a corner, and if you want to give, you give, but they never mention it. That is a huge mistake. Because God sent His only Son to me. I have a necessary response. God, I love you. I love you, and so I'm going to be here. I love you, so I'm going to sing songs. I love you, so I'm going to give tithes and offerings. God, I love you. Because you did it without me deserving it. You took the initiative. So, I don't know, if you don't remember anything else from the message today, I, I would encourage Rich, Richard Foster's quote uh, to stay with us for a long, long time. God is the initiator. The Bible says God chose you. Well, I thought I made a decision. I thought I filled out a card. I thought I raised my hand. I thought I came to the altar. Yes, that was my response to his initiative. And if he had never taken the initiative, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing today. It wouldn't matter. It matters because of him. I give, not because the pastor talks about money, I give because I love Him. I don't come to church just because somebody guilted me into it. I come because I love Him. I don't serve in the church just because no one else will. I serve in the church because I love Him. It's a natural response 
to a God of initiative toward me. If I don't love him, then I don't give. I, I, I said this in my last congregation, if you don't love the Lord, I, I don't want you to give. We don't need money. But God knows that by giving tithes and offerings, we are putting expression to our love. And so, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, as we were preparing for Thanksgiving, um, I was at, I think it was at Kroger's and uh, right before I was going to check out they had all these little bouquets of flowers, you know, for five bucks. You know. And the, the Lord spoke to my heart at that very moment. My wife and I have been married 48 years. She knows I love her. She knows I love her. You know, as one guy used to say, you know, she knows that I told her on our wedding day. She doesn't have to hear it every day. <laughs> oh, yes, she does. And sometimes she needs to hear it without words. And even a $5 bouquet of white little daisies just lifted her spirits. So when I drop something in the offering plate, or I come to church on Sunday morning, or I'm sitting at my desk, and I open my Bible and start communing with God, do you think it blesses the heart of God? He knows I love Him, but He wants me to show it. So everything we do is simply showing the Lord. And that's why He begins the passage by saying, shout for joy. It's all about Him. Why would I shout for joy? Well, here's a reason, right from the text. God made me. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He is he who made us. He made us. Um, Here's an assignment. You, you, you can sometime this week look at and read the entire Psalm 139. Uh, that's important because there are people in our world, many people in our world, and maybe even a majority of people in our world, that believe that uh, uh, prior to the actual birth date, there is no life. There is no human being. Well, God says otherwise. He made me and designed me and formed me in my mother's womb. He knew me before I knew myself. He knew me before the world saw me. Before I was in physical existence by the eyesight of others, God was forming me. Yes, there is life in the womb. Yes, that is a human being. And that's why we shout for joy. You know, joy is a connection to Christ. It's a connection to who God is. And God is my creator. And so when the branch is connected to the vine, and I understand that God created me, I have no other alternative but to shout for joy. It's a natural response. I love you for all that you mean to me. God is your creator. You want to honor him. You want to show him in tangible ways. And shouting for joy in worship is a part of that. Doesn't have to be verbal. When you drop your tithe into the basket, it's quiet. But God hears a shout of joy. Does it make sense? It's tangible stuff, but it's spiritual in its dimension. Why shout for joy? Because God is good. That's what the text says. It is he who made us. 
and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Praise his name. Why? For God is good. Now, there has been an increase of focus in the American church on the goodness of God, and I am delighted with that. We see it in some of the modern music, we see it in more of the preaching, and it's a, an appropriate, healthy focus. However, sometimes we cross the line and we don't put the focus just on the fact that God is good. We start focusing on He's good because He's good to me. There's a difference. It's not about me. And there are days in our lives where we don't feel like a lot of good is coming our way. But that doesn't change the fact that God is good. And there are days I don't feel he's very good, but that doesn't change the reality that he is good. His goodness is not dependent upon how I feel about his goodness. And some of the modern music and some of the modern preaching has gone past that line to overemphasize that I want to shout for joy, I want to declare the goodness of God, but only when he's good to me. Well, he is good to you, but you're not going to always feel that. He is good to you, but it's not always going to feel like that. There are going to be times you're in the midst of a pandemic, but he's still good. There are days when uh, you're struggling with a physical illness and then you get a diagnosis you never wanted. That doesn't mean he's not good. Bad things happen to good people because we live in a broken world. But God is still good. You see, there's a difference between happiness and joy. Joy is connected to the vine. It doesn't change. It's not dependent on circumstances. It's dependent on a God who created us and a God who is good. Thirdly, I can shout for joy because God loves us. How do I know he loves us? The Bible says that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. And then the Bible goes on to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I call that love. But God is love whether I feel love or not. God is love whether no one has given me a bouquet of flowers ever. He still loves. One of the earliest truths that children learn in the church is God is love. That's an attribute of God whether I feel it or not. Whether my experiences support it or not. And that's the joy of the Lord. It doesn't change just because my circumstances change. This is all the initiative of God, isn't it? God created me out of his own initiative. God is good out of his initiative. And God loves out of his initiative. I mentioned earlier that Jesus is coming again. And that's going to be out of the Father's initiative. And even the Son of God doesn't know the time of his return. Do we have reason to shout for joy? God is a God who throughout history and into the future will take initiative on our behalf will do what is good for us, whether we feel it or not. He will send His Son, whether we ask Him to or not, or whether the world hangs Him on a cross. He will send His Son to redeem us. Shout for joy. Why? Because God is faithful. 
For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The Bible tells us in Paul's letters to Timothy that God is faithful even when I am not faithful. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever been unfaithful to God? It's a rhetorical question. Every single one of us is a broken, sinful human being. Each one of us falls short of the glory of God. I am unfaithful to God far more times than I even would want to think. And yet, in spite of that, God is always faithful. You see, who He is is not dependent on who I am. Who He is is not dependent on how I feel. Who He is is not dependent on how I behave. He is God. And you can stand on that solid rock. And when the world changes, you know God doesn't change. And when your life feels upside down, you can have the confidence and you can have the joy if you're remaining in Him. It's all about Him. I don't think I can say that too often. Because the longer I've been a preacher, the more I realize, you know, this was never about me. Uh, in, in fact, the older I get, the smaller I feel. Uh, I, I like what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 6. You know, I, I, I have this vision of the, the glory of God. I see the seraphim, and I see all of this, and I see God sitting on his throne, and I fall before him, and I see myself as a man with unclean lips. You know, that's a great posture to be in this Christmas. Because Christmas is all about him. Now, we've made it all about us. But it's all about him. Yeah. I now have six grandkids and three foster grandkids. I've told you about that. I, I tell you what, we now have two little ones. And boy, is it fun Christmas shopping for the very little ones. Uh, I love giving them gifts and I love seeing the expression on their face. And some of these come from very rough uh, homes where they've never experienced this kind of thing. But as I give them that and I see the smile on their face, I realize how small that is, how little that is, how insignificant that is compared to me coming to church and giving my presence, presence here to an almighty God. It's nothing compared to coming here and listening to Greg lead us in song as I shout joy to the Lord. It's nothing compared to dropping something in the offering plate and say, God, I love you. That's Christmas. Because it's upward focused. Not just me. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts to those grandkids. They love it. I love it. I believe God is honored in those kinds of expressions. But I just want to say, it's a little bit like Isaiah. We have to come to that point where we realize it's never been about us, even though we've made it that way. God, I'm here for you. I'm here for you this Christmas. Well, may this be the merriest Christmas you've ever had. Well, Pastor Steve, how can that be? I can't travel to see my family. I can't get all my kids together. I can't do the things that I want to do. I haven't been able to go out shopping. Um, hey, what an opportunity to reset our priorities about Christmas. Do you think maybe the United States of America, if not the rest of the world, needed a reset? I mean, we have gone way over the top. I mean, it's like we measure our success by how much is spent on Cyber Monday. 
I mean, let's get real. God is waiting for a bouquet from us. We say we love him, we profess that truth, but God is waiting this Christmas for our hearts to get ready to shout joy to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, on this second Sunday of Advent, here at Schroyer Road Baptist Church, we collectively join our hearts together and we shout to the Lord. Why? Because you made us. Why? Because you are good. Why? Because you love us. Why? Because you are faithful. And if you weren't faithful to keep your promises, I would be in a heap of trouble. So we worship you. Not out of compulsion, not to impress anybody, not to say, look what I did, but we worship as an expression of love to you. And we pray this in the wonderful name of our Savior Jesus.